This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. You know why? Because God is good, and he's worthy, worthy to be praised. Amen? Well, hey, man, God bless you. Happy Monday to everybody. Uh, it's, it's one of those kind of days where you're going to have to make your mind up to set your emotions and to do some of the things that uh, you already know to do. You already know to do some things. And um, so I send blessings your way. We're going to make some confessions today. We're going to we're going to uh, take the blood of Jesus and declare the blood of Jesus over some situations in your life today. And uh, I'm going to share some there's a difference between, you know, successful decisions and emotional decisions. And a lot of times, you know, when you can't control your emotions, they will tr control you and they will control you in the decisions that you make. So you might want to hit the share button. I'm going to give you three factors in making successful decisions versus emotional decisions. You know, we are we have emotions. We don't deny that God gave us emotions. Um, and I'm never, you know, for trying to teach people to be emotionless. You have emotions. It's a gift of, of, that comes from God. Um, but we've got to make sure that our emotions, um, especially when they are negative emotions, that our emotions, that they don't govern our life, that we don't allow our emotions to govern our lives and we end up in a worse situation because it's an emotional decision. You know, uh, the things you expose yourself to will determine how you think. And then how you think will determine how you feel. It will determine your emotions. But then your emotions will determine your decisions. Uh, I want you to make sure you get a hold of that now. You, you, you start off with what what are you hanging around? What are you hearing? What are you exposing your eyes, your ears, your mind, your your heart? What are you exposing? What are you being exposed to? All right. So that exposure is going to determine the way you think. So if you ever wonder, why do I think this way? Well, you got to you got to go back and look at, well, what have I been exposing myself to? If you ever try to figure out where did this way of thinking come from? Then you got to go back and you got to realize, oh, wow, it's it's what I've been exposing myself to It's what I've been hearing It's what I've been seeing It's what I've been fellowshipping with. You know, the Bible says evil communication will corrupt good manners. And so the time you spend exposing yourself to your whatever your your group people, it doesn't have to be a bunch of people. It's, it's you know, hearing negative talk hearing broken people say negative things about you and then eventually you start believing it uh being around people that devalue you all the time uh you have to rise up above that because you know if you don't it's going to determine the way you think and let me say this don't let anybody devalue you uh that's a serious deal don't let anybody devalue you. don't don't want to be married so much and so badly that you tolerate somebody devaluing you. It's not worth it because if you allow yourself to be devalued now by somebody, uh, man, you, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to be rough. Somebody asked me one time, they said, how come it always seems that I always end up with the wrong kind of man a woman did? And she says, it's just always I'm, I'm just always with the wrong kind of man. What, what, why do I keep drawing? I think she said the wrong kind of man to me. And um, the answer to that question is uh, because you're not paying attention to those early signs and signals that they're giving off to you. A lot of times we ignore the signs that we see in the very beginning. We ignore the uh, signals that we see in the very beginning. And um, I don't know, like they're just going to go away. You know, my mom always told me if somebody tell you uh, they are fool, you probably need to believe them, <laughs> you know. And so it's not so much that something's wrong with you as much as it is that you're just not 
paying attention to those signs and those signals that are, uh, you know, being displayed at the very beginning of your relationship. But uh, don't be devalued. Don't be devalued. I mean, you're you're like a you're you're like a precious stone that's that you have to dig deep for in order to find. You're not just a common rock that's on the top of the the surface. Um, it, it's so important. I like what somebody just said. You treat people how to treat you. That is very very good, and um, and and you got to be careful not to let that happen. And and um, don't ever approach a relationship thinking that oh my God, I'll never find anybody like this again, or oh if I let them go, well I'm I'm willing to let them. I'm willing to let them devalue me just so I won't be alone. That's not healthy. It's not healthy and it's not God. And what happens is, you know, you when you're so devalued and so devalued, you become this mat, uh, you know, that people wipe their feet off of. And, you know, before you know it, you're just living that kind of way. You're don't let your emotions run your life. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. And so, um, you know, we, we, we love you. We want you to feel good. We want you to um, live a life of peace and joy. And that's not going to happen if you let people devalue you. And so wake up and, and be all that God has called you to be. Wake up and allow God to, to, um, I like what they said, give you some emotional intelligence. <laughs> Amen. So uh, we're going to talk about that today. Three factors in making successful decisions versus emotional decisions. So you got to check out what you're around. And um, and then that determines the way you think. Now, this is why this is important. Once your thinking is based on your surroundings and the things you expose yourself to. Then that, that way of thinking is going to lead you to. Uh, emotions that match that way of thinking. You f you feel depressed because you're you have heavy thoughts, and and that way you're thinking is causing you to feel that way. If you want to change the way you feel, you change the way you think. You want to change what you think, you got to change what you're exposing yourself to. Amen. Got to change what you're exposing yourself to. And so, uh, somebody says, "Well, I just feel bad. So what?" Well, here's the deal: uh, if you don't correct those bad feelings, those bad emotions, they will interfere with your decision making. And you'll find out that you will be making decisions that will be in line with that, those bad emotions. You'll be making decisions that are being in line with those that, you know, with that devaluing and you'll make decisions based on how you feel and you feel based on how you think and you think based on what you're being exposed to. So let's come out of that today. Let's start this week off um, and challenge yourself uh, to, you know, be happy, to be wholesome, to have healthy, godlike thoughts and to take authority over over how you feel. Now, you can go from day to day to day talking about how bad you feel and Oh, no, it's no good. And I just feel awful. And I just don't even want to live. And I'm just so tired, of all this stuff. And somehow you think by yielding to, um, you know, crazy stuff, that's going to make it feel better. You know, freedom is not freedom to do something uh, stupid. Freedom is not freedom to sin more. I mean, when Jesus set us free, he didn't set us free so we can sin more. He set us free so we can do what's right. We're free to, to live right. We're, we're, we're free to to have joy. We're, we're free to be everything that God told us that we can be. Uh, but it's going to be up to you to make that decision of quality. It's going to be up to you to do that. And so all is well with you. World changers. God bless you. We send blessings your way. You're blessed going in, blessed coming out. You're the head, not the tail. You're above only. And and, and uh, we just thank God. We're just thanking God. God's, God's been really dealing with me and I'm just excited about uh, us coming together and uh, let's continue to pray that this virus moves out of the way and uh, uh, the Lord is is coming back sooner than you think 
God is coming back sooner than you think. Uh, God is coming back sooner than you think. God is coming back sooner than you think. And so it's time for us to uh, get our house in order, get our thought life together. Uh, and don't don't allow yourself to be devalued, not in any way, any kind of way. Amen. Let's go ahead and do our Psalms 91 declarations. Then let's plead the blood of Jesus on some things. And then I want to show you share these three factors in making successful decisions versus emotional decisions. OK, you ready? Repeat after me. I declare that I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I declare that I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I declare that I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge, and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me. No plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. And he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he will reward me with long life and will show me his salvation. I am Psalms 91 equipped. In Jesus name. Amen. Come on, let's plead the blood of Jesus over some areas. The Bible says we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. What does that mean? It means simply this, that whatever the devil throws your way, the blood of Jesus has already provided. You know, having faith in the blood of Jesus is knowing what the blood of Jesus has already made available. And so when we plead the blood of Jesus, we are declaring that the blood of Jesus has already made this available. Amen. And we receive it by faith. So let's declare some things. Confess this out loud. Father, I thank you that because of the blood of Jesus, death has no hold over me. I will live forever with you in heaven because through the blood to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Father, I am so thankful that you forgive me from all of my sins because of the blood of Jesus. I declare that I am made innocent by the blood of Jesus. I am free from guilt, shame, and condemnation forever. Father, I thank you that I have abundant life through the blood of Jesus. I have an abundance of your peace, your joy, your righteousness, your healing, your provision, 
in my life. In Jesus name. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus, which makes me holy. I am sanctified and set apart by the blood of Jesus for your specific plan and purpose for my life. I commit to living a life of holiness to set myself apart from the things of this world. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus being applied to the doorpost of my life. I declare that no evil will come near my dwelling place, nor will any plague come near my tent, my house. Nothing shall be by any means hurt me or harm me or injure me. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that through the blood of Jesus, I now have peace that passes all understanding, guarding my heart and my mind. I declare that I have peace, wholeness, and completeness, nothing missing and nothing broken in any way, in any area of my life. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Um, let's do a couple more. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to live inside of me. I thank you that I now abide in him because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The anointed one lives inside of me. And that anointing removes every burden and destroys every yoke in my life and the lives that I touch. Father, I'm so grateful that you were willing to pay the ultimate price for me, the blood of your only son, so that I could belong to you forever. I declare that I am forever yours and that nothing can snatch me out of your hands. Isn't that powerful? Father, I thank you that because of the blood of Jesus, it is just as if I had never sinned. I declare that you are my defender and that no long and that I no longer need to spend my time defending myself against accusations. I am unaccusable because of the blood. I am forever yours and nothing can snatch me out of your hands. Father, I thank you that I have right standing with you as my father because of the blood of Jesus. I declare that because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I no longer have to work to be right and do everything right. I acknowledge that I already am made right by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. 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 And praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let me spend the time that I have left. Um, and praise God. You're going to have a great day today. Amen. The, the power of God's with you today. And and uh, you made your mind up and you set your mind that you're going to be happy today. Amen. All is well with you in the name of Jesus. So let's talk about this. Um, um, three factors in making successful decisions versus emotional decisions. So number one, uh, what do I need to have to make a successful decision? Number one, accurate, accurate knowledge, accurate knowledge. Uh, Hosea 4 and 6 talks about uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And the knowledge has got to not just be foolishness. It's got to be accurate knowledge. So if you're going to make a successful decision, it's going to start with the right knowledge, the accurate knowledge. And, and that's and I mean that with all sincerity. The knowledge needs to be accurate. And, you know, in today's time, 
we got so much wrong stuff going out and it's just not accurate. Uh, and, and it's not paying attention to the context and people are just saying all kinds of things and you're getting these religious goosebumps and it's just not accurate at all. So, um, accurate knowledge is, is, is one way to do that. Number two, wisdom or wise counsel. If you want to make successful decision, wisdom and wise counsel. I mean, the best counsel from God's word and, and from godly people who have been there, you know. So if you want to have wisdom and wise counsel, then I think the best counsel is from his word or someone who, you know, is has been saved and they live by God's word. And uh, from people who have been successful enough to have gone through that. OK, because remember, wisdom is knowing what to do when you don't uh, it, it, it's knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. And, and a lot of people get stuck right there. They're just like, I just don't know what to do. And so God's pouring wisdom out all the time. And if we spend some time with him, then we can partake of that wisdom or that wise counsel. And then real quickly, the third uh, factor in making a successful decision is understanding the process necessary to achieve the desired goal. Understanding the process necessary to achieve the desired goal. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say you want to have a great, a great marriage. Then you got to understand the process. You got to understand the process. Many problems in your marriage, your finances, your health are related to your emotions. A lot of them are. And emotions can play a major role in releasing uh, chemicals, causing depression, anxiety, stress, all those kind of things. But the question is, do you understand the, the process that's necessary to obtain that desired goal? And uh, I don't think a lot of times that people understand the 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 process necessary to obtain a good marriage. It's like, you know, you just let your emotions just run you. And just one day when you wake up, you don't feel good. You say, I want out. <laughs> well, well, your emotions are determining that. And marriage has a process. It, it goes through a, a growth, growth and a process. And if you hang in there long enough, uh, then, you know, you will understand that. But see, if you've never been uh, exposed to that process to have a successful marriage or exposed to the process of how to have a successful business or exposed to the process on how to achieve whatever goal you have, then a lot of people just don't ever get there because they don't, they're not interested in knowing the process. Every, everything really has a process and you got to understand it. The, the, the process of knowing what happens when, you know, the devil attacks you, there's a process involved there. Um, uh, and, and, and you're right. Exposure is important, uh, where all of this stuff is concerned, but exposure is the original thing we talked about at the very beginning. I mean, what you expose yourself to is going to really take you down the line for a lot of things to happen in your life. So take that today. You might want to make the list bigger and broader, but don't, don't allow emotion, emotional decisions, just like you can expose yourself to negative things that will produce negative ways of thinking that will produce negative emotions that will produce negative decisions. You can also expose yourself to, to great things that will produce great way of thinking that will produce great emotions that will bring you to a place of making some great decisions. And so today evaluate, you know, what are you spending the most of your time doing and thinking and looking at? What are, what have you exposed yourself to? And uh, that that's going to be really important in your life. God bless you. You're not going to be governed by your emotions. You're going to be governed by the word of God and allow yourself to be exposed to that word and watch, watch some things change. I mean, something so simple as that um, can make a big difference in your life. Something so simple can make a big difference. Well, I love you guys. Have an amazing day today. God bless you, world changers. Uh, all of my family and friends, let's just hang in there. This too will pass. Uh, 
make the most of this time grow spiritually mature emotionally be the church outside the building and when we all get to, together we'll have a, a better gathering in the building because we've we've all gone through some things and we're we've come out uh better not bitter but better and so i i bless you guys in the name of jesus god bless you i'll see you on tomorrow bye-bye